G'day, Anders Sulman Nielsen here, futurist and the founder of the research think tank, Think. A lot of you guys have been tweeting or commenting on our Instagram or even in our blog posts that you want to hear about the Internet of Things. So today's little video blog here is on the Internet of Things or even machine to machine communications and we'll refer for a moment as well to artificial intelligence or AI. So what is the Internet of Things? Well, for many years we access the Internet through our desktop devices. Then, of course, came the tablets as well as the MacBook Airs and the laptops. New ways of connecting the Internet increasingly via Wi-Fi. Well, the Internet of Things is when various devices uh, are also communicating with each other through machines. For example, we're standing here at the Carriage Works in Everly in Sydney. A uh, bunch of old school machines, some very, very old school machines that are beautiful uh, visually. But these machines were somewhat sort of dumb. <laughs> the machines of tomorrow will be much more sophisticated. Let me tell you about a few so you can kind of ground this concept of the Internet of Things into your everyday reality. One good example is Nest, recently acquired by Google. Essentially, Nest is a glorified thermostat in your home. But the really interesting thing about Nest is it's designed as a sort of central intelligence hub for your home. Uh, it can automatically switch on to reduce your carbon emissions and your energy footprint. And it might be that on a hot summer's day when you're away at work, you don't have to have the air conditioning blasting at home. But based on communications such as an automatic notification from your smartphone that you're on the way home and 10 minutes away, Nest can switch on the thermostat and thus the air conditioning to make sure it's cool enough so when you get home, that'll be nice and comfortable for you. Now Nest for some time was just a one kind of product ecosystem or a part of an ecosystem where there was nothing else. However, they recently released their SDK or the developers kit where they're now starting to integrate Nest as a sort of central intelligence unit that communicates both with say devices like your jawbone up or your Nike or your other wearable tech devices so that say if you wake up 10 minutes early one day Again, Nest knows that you've woken up and it will adjust the settings based on your most preferred uh, levels of temperature for an awake state and for your breakfast, which of course should consist of something very, very healthy. So this is one way Nest integrates, but it's also starting to integrate and communicate through its development kit, integrates with Nest or so work with, with Nest with devices like your clothes washer like your Mercedes-Benz on the way home. So that again, uh, you can maybe run your laundry when it's an off-peak hour, rather than running your laundry when everybody else is doing it. Again, saving both energy and saving you money. Nest is moving from just being a mere thermostat with a beautiful interface in your home, beautifully designed for your home, and now starting to communicate with other machines around your home to make better decisions about energy use and also a more optimum use of your time. This is the Internet of Things. As more devices start speaking to one another, we can make smarter decisions about what we do and how we manage our finite resources. On a consumer basis, this is important. But let me turn to the next level here, or what's called AI, or artificial intelligence. Now, many of you might have played around with the concept of Siri, for example, on your iPhones. Now, Siri is like a personal concierge. You can ask her many questions, many of which she'll know the answer to, some of which she doesn't. But on a recent conference, for example, when I was in Queenstown, New Zealand, uh, speaking to real estate professionals, I asked Siri to get me the top 10 rated real estate professionals in New Zealand. And of course, I start getting some responses back from Siri because she's out there searching the web for the top rated real estate agents. Again, here I'm communicating to a device that's accessing the internet and the internet of things. And the question is, if you as a human being or as a real estate agent in that instance are not rating or not being found by Siri, 
what's going to happen to your business tomorrow. Now, Siri is just one example of artificial intelligence that gets trained over time to recognize that when I say, call mum, it will automatically find my mum, Birgitta Sorma Nilsson, in my iPhone and dial her. You train and coach Siri over time so she becomes more intelligent. But this leads to a potential coupling that is well, both interesting, but potentially massively disrupting as well to human beings. Because as Siri maybe starts coupling and starts marrying up with something as sophisticated as IBM's Watson, the machine that beat the two best contestants in the world in jeopardy, which is sort of the ultimate test for artificial intelligence actually becoming not just artificial, but real intelligence. When Watson smashed the two top contestants in Jeopardy worldwide to pieces in 2011, something important happened. Because Watson is now helping medical advisors, medical doctors, financial advisors around the world make better predictions, make better decisions, and of course, this will radically change not just how heavy manufacturing gets done, but increasingly in how white collar work gets carried out as well. I recently spoke at a conference for travel agents in Bali, in Indonesia. And here again, I could ask Siri to get me the best routes and the best ticket prices on a route between, say, Bali and New York. And Siri instantly gives me a response to this. Imagine when Siri starts marrying up with Watson to become even smarter than some of the smartest human beings in the world, having more knowledge and essentially having the whole internet in Siri's hands or pockets or whatever the computer analog might be in this regard. She'll be able to make better predictions. She'll be able to replace everything from executive assistants, personal assistants, lawyers, accountants, and of course, travel agents. This is the disruptive power of the internet of things, marrying up with artificial intelligence, creating a whole new world. These are all sort of future predictions, future scenarios that you need to be aware of so that you can better integrate your offerings with the internet of things and starting to run things in a much smarter way. We'll all be much smarter as a result of machines communicating effectively and bypassing human error. These are my thoughts as a futurist. I hope you enjoy this session. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so below. Ciao. Thank you.